Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll solve problem number 144. As you can see, problem 144 is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that Mike has, Mike has, give, just give me one second, excuse me. We are told that Mike has two thirds of his savings invested at 4%. Two thirds of his savings is he has invested in, a, in an account where he gets 4%. One quarter, one fourth, one fourth at three percent. One quarter of his savings is invested in an account which which pays three percent, and he has put the rest in a in a different account, different instrument where he gets two percent. We are further told that his total interest income last year was eight hundred and sixty dollars. Based on the fact that his total interest income last year was eight hundred and sixty dollars, what is his total savings? If you wish, if you wish, you can try it on your own. Do it your, do it on your own first. Pause the video, solve the problem on your own, and once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together, okay? I'll get out of your way, and I'll give you five seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. One more time, Mike has two thirds of his savings invested at 4%, one quarter, one fourth at 3%, the rest at 2%. His total interest income last year was $860. What is his total savings? Let's begin, shall we? So he has two thirds, Two third of his savings at four percent. Two third of his savings. Let's give the, let's give savings a name. What 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 do we want to call it? We have to use some symbols to represent his total savings. Let's let's use letter S. Two third of his savings is invested at four percent, and four percent simply means four over one hundred. That's the amount of that's the amount of money that he earns. That's the amount of interest that he's going to earn from the first account, which gives him four percent. In the second account, he has one fourth of his income invested. In the second account, one fourth, which is S over four, and is invested at three percent. Keep your work neat. It's easier for you to deal with it if it's neat. The rest is invested as two percent. Question is, how much is the rest? Two third and a one quarter. So if you have a whole, minus a two third and a one quarter. What's the whole? Well, we have a 3 and a 4 here, so the common denominator is going to be 12. So it's going to be 12 minus, this is going to be 4, 8, and this is going to be 3. It turns out that it is 1 12. The rest that we are talking about here, the rest that we are talking about here, turns out is 1 12. Of course it's 1 12 because, because 2 third, 2 third is same as 8 12. And 1 quarter, one quarter is same as three twelve. So by the time you add eight third and eight third and three third, eight third and three third, eight plus three is eleven. All of that is eleven third. Uh, uh, eight, not eight third rather. Eight twelve and three twelve. By the time you add eight twelve and three twelve, eight plus three is eleven. So that's this amount. That this this portion represents eleven twelve. These these two together, eleven twelve, which means the rest must be one twelve. So 112 is S over 12, and on that amount he earns only 2%, which is 2 over 100. And finally we are told that the total amount of interest that he earns, this is the total amount of interest that he earns in the three different instruments, three different accounts, total amount of interest that he earns is $860, and I left no room for myself to put that there, so we're going to have to squeeze it in here, $860. This is all, that's all we have. We have to work, we have to work on this equation. We have to work on this equation and solve for S. That's what it is. Once we have the amount of savings, total amount of savings, we can figure out what he has from each of these things. Let's do it together. I'm just babbling right now, do you understand? Because once we have the value of S, that's exactly what we're looking for. We are done. We don't have to do anything. So let's simplify this thing. So here we have 2 times 4. 2 times 4, which is 8, 8 over S over 300, 3 times 100, that's 300, that's the first quantity, plus 3 times S, which is 3S over 400, plus 2 times S, which is 2S over 1200, and that has to add up to 860. As you can see, 
Here we have a denominator of 300, here we have a denominator of 400, here we have a denominator of 1200. If you can make all of these denominators the same, it will make our life easier because if all the denominators are the same, if every single term in the equation is the same denominator, then the denominator ceases to play any role. We can just concentrate on the top part, which is precisely what we're going to do here. Question is, how do we convert this denominator of 12, uh, how do we convert this denominator of 300 into 1200? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is just 1, so we haven't done anything to it. Now we have 3, 4 times 300, which is 1200. Here we have 400. Take this quantity and multiply it by 3 over 3. And this one is already 1200. We don't have to do anything. We need to introduce 1200 at the bottom here. So let's multiply this quantity by 1200 over 1200. And that's the equation we were going to work with. And you're going to work with it, work work on it on the top. So very simple, very straightforward. Here we have four times eight, which is thirty-two. Thirty-two s plus three times three, which is nine, plus two s has to equal eight sixty. 860 times 1200 times 1200 which I'm going to write as 12 times 100. Why are we writing 1200 as 12 times 100? Because I find it easier to deal with 12 and 100 separately than try to work with 1200 together. Do you understand? Yes, I'm a sissy. Do you understand? 32 plus 9, 32 plus 10 would have been 42, so 32 plus 9 is 41, 41 plus 2 is 43, so it's 43 s. 43s equals 860. Now that I see 43 here and I see 860, I'm going to write that as 86 times 10. And then 12 times 100. Divide both sides by 43. We divide both sides by 43. The 43 is going to go away and we will have our savings, which is 43 is twice of 86. Uh, rather, 86 is twice of 40, 43, so it's 2. 2 times 12 is 2 times 12 is 24. 24. 10 times 100 is 1,000. So it turns out that S turns out to be 24,000. We are claiming there is total savings that is 24,000. The last thing we need to do, which is always a good idea, is to take a few seconds and verify. Verify. Make sure your answer is correct. Let's do that, shall we? Let's do that. So they tell us that his two-third of his income is invested at 4%. Okay, so let, here, here we go. Two-third of 24,000. Let's forget the three zeros right now. Two-third of 24,000 is going to be 16,000. This represents 16,000 is, is invested at 4%. How much is 4% of 16,000? Do you know? What we know, we know that 4%, 4% of 4% of 1,000, 4% of 1,000 has to be 40. 4% of 1,000 has to be 40 because 4% of 100 is 4. Therefore, 4% 4 of 1,000 has to be 40. Or if you like, we can go step by step. 4% 4 of 100 is 4. Therefore, 4% 4 of 1,000 1,000 has got to be 40. We don't have 1,000. We don't have 1,000. We have 16,000. So we have to multiply one more time. One more time by 16. And that's it. Is. So I'm making it too complicated. 4% of 1,000 is 40. Let's, let's right here. You see 4% of 1,000 is 40. 4% of 1,000 is 40. Therefore, 4% 4 of 16,000 would have to be 16 times this amount, 16 times 40. 16 times 4 is 64, so it's going to be 640. This amount is 640. Let's go to the next step. We will further told that he has one fourth invested at 3%. One fourth of 24 is 6,000. So he has 6,000 invested at 3%. Again, again, 3% of 1,000 is 30. If 3% of 1,000 is 30, 
then 3% of 6,000 must be 6 times as much. If you don't like multiplying it like here, if you don't like multiplying the way I did it here, technically what it should be, what it should have been, I should have left a room here. Let's start again. 3% of 1,000 is 30. Therefore, 3% of 6,000 is going to be 6 times as much, which is 180. Let's do the next one, which was 112. So, 24,000, 24,000, and if you take a 12 of that, that's just 2,000. And 2,000 is invested at 2%. How much is 2% 2 of 2,000? How much is 2% of 2,000? Again, 2% 2 2 of 1,000 is 20. If 2% of 1,000 is 20, 2% 2 of 2,000, 2 times 1,000 is going to be twice as much. 2% of 2,000 is going to be twice as much, which is 40. So, 2,000 at 2% 2 should give him, should give him, 40. If these three amounts, if these three amounts add up to what the problem tells us that they should add up to, then our answer is correct. The problem tells us that his total interest income last year was $860. If we can get $860 out of that, then we are home free. 8 plus 4 is 12, or rather 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16, or 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16, you get a 6. Theory 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. What do you know? By golly. One more time, luck was on our side. Bye now. Our side is what I meant to say, S-I-D-E.